This conference will now be recorded. Morning, everybody. Welcome to a continuation of our technology training. Um, hope that you're all nice and cozy inside watching the miserable rainy weather outside and not having to be there. Um, we start again with um, SharePoint versus OneDrive. People have asked me to go back over that again. And you should all have received an email from me last night with a whole lot of files, Word and Excel files. So the first example I'm going to show you so that you know if you want to save something to OneDrive or if it's a SharePoint folder, what it is. So the file I'm going to pop up here on the screen, it's all a lot of nonsense. This isn't true names or figures or anything like that. But as you can see, it's just a cover letter in closing a check. So this is not something that anybody else really needs to know about. It's something that I need to know that I sent it. So this I'm going to save in OneDrive. My team members don't need to do this either. Uh, Philip wouldn't need to know this, no one. So it is an example of what you would save to OneDrive, something that refers only to yourself and not to anybody else. So very easy. The next one I'm going to show you is these labels. Now this is something that everybody in the agency can use, not just me. So therefore this is something that I would save to SharePoint where everybody has access, say to the forms drive um, site. So everybody could use that because teachers, cooks, family advocates, regional managers, anybody needs labels. The third example is this one here, cellular telephone acknowledgement receipt. So most of you guys know that this is basically something you sign up with Lamaris. So this is something I would be needing to share with Lamaris. So I would put this on SharePoint where she and I both have access. So we have a folder in SharePoint that is where we both save documents along with Isabel and Catressa that just the four of us want to share. So it's not sitting in my computer, actually which it is, um, it's something that we will share so everyone can have access to that. I have a Spanish-speaking lady out here and I have no so idea what she wants. I hope those visuals explain where you would save something to, of when you would be putting it into OneDrive versus when you would be putting it into SharePoint. Does that help? Hi, Janice, it's Wendy. You had hey, mentioned, we... hi, you had mentioned about um, that you both have access to, or three of you or four of you. Can you right. just talk in general terms about access to sites or files or things on how that gets done as much as this group would need to know? Okay, so I am going to save this. I'll show you now exactly how I'm going to shave, oh, save this to SharePoint because it's one that I know that I haven't put in yet for all of them. So first of all, I should have moved my autosave to off. So it is now off, so anything I do. So now I'm going to go to... I have little shortcuts so that I don't have to go file, save as. So there's my save as. And because I'm working in the Word app, it's going to open up, uh, which you would normally see in File Explorer. So I am going to go to a linked 
folder, which means it's in SharePoint. So you see this over here means it is a linked. And this is in SharePoint where the ladies and I share a folder. So what I would do there, and I would go to, da -da -da -da. I'll just have it lying loose. So I put it in there like that, and I will correct my spelling mistakes. And save. And it is now saved into SharePoint. If I have to go and look into SharePoint. And I saved it into here. You won't all see that folders because it's not a folder that everybody has. So you see, I have an EOO folder there. If any of you go into data, you're not going to see that because it is a restricted folder in SharePoint. Just like when we had the M drive, there were certain folders that you could not go into in the M drive. It's exactly the same thing. So I saved it in there and then I saved it in there and I had it hanging loose. And there it is there saying I saved it a minute ago. So if I want to just save the, the labels, which is one that I want everyone to have access to. Again, I would go to my file, save and, and I would choose a, a location where I know everybody has access, and that would be the CF Forms admin drive site, and where we have letterhead and fact covers, most probably the sensible place to put it now. Okay, so to save it to there. So those people that go with links through the file explorer will see it that way. For those that go to SharePoint, I saved it in CF Agency Forms. And I saved it in CF Forms Admin. And I saved it in letterhead and fax cover. And there it is there. So that is how you save it so that anybody could access it in SharePoint. Does that help? So are you saying that CF agency info and CF data, everything, all the folders within there are accessible by everyone? <laughs> So okay. CF agency info and forms, that one is accessible to absolutely everybody in the agency. The data one, there's certain restricted folders. And if it has been restricted, you won't see it if you don't have access to it. So say now it was an HR document. Um, there's no way any of us would be able to see it. It would be restricted to Stacy, Bridget, Clorianne, and Ryan. So none of us would even know it was there. So if this was a document about a new hire that I wanted to send, I would email it to them because I wouldn't have access to be able to save it to any HR SharePoint documentation. Does that make sense? It does, but there's just this little piece, like if you said if you wanted to share something from SharePoint to others, how do you know uh, if they have access? That is a good question. So um, 
obviously within your own department, everybody would have access because you'll know what you put into your particular site. If it was um, something to do with a child, then that is like a very difficult one for me to say because I'm not sure where family advocates and uh, comprehensive services and teachers share things. So again, your best bet would be to email it to somebody who would know where to save it to SharePoint where the people that should have access have access and that it's not available to everybody. Do you think that's a good enough plan? I'll let you know when I try it. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, uh, if you're on, does that sound like a plan to for you guys? Okay. Say it again. Um, with what I just said about if you don't know where to save it in SharePoint and it's something that's confidential, is it best to email it to you guys and you will save it where you know it is a safe location? As it relates to HR forms, yes. Yes. Okay. Does, uh, do you think, oh wait, Lamara says someone has a question. Um, did you answer the one that says, how would you find the most up to date form in SharePoint? Okay, so somebody wants to know how you find the most up-to-date form in SharePoint. So I've got up CF agency info and forms. So I know the one that was just updated the other day is mileage. So I'm going to type that in over there. Mileage assessment. Uh, sorry, going back to the site. I just want to get to the right page. There we go. And it opens it for me and I can see when it was done. And I know that there is a lot of forms that have been changing. So if you know that the forms are kept in the EDU site, I would just do that as well on the EDU site instead of going to agency and forms. Uh, I do not have access to the EDU site because I'm not a teacher, but that is where you would <coughs> go and do it. You should pull up the site where you think it is and um, then search in SharePoint and it would pull up the most up-to-date one for you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so something else to, oh, Laurie has a question. Yeah, so that was me who asked that question because as we're pulling up forms all the time and we go to the CERT, I go to the search and then it pulls up, you know, like 100 forms. So I kind of wanted to see, you know, like where it actually says on there, this is the updated or like it was mostly updated March of 2019. Um, so is there a way you can find a, an example of that in there? Because I, I have trouble right. just to find so, forms. Can we delete like forms that shouldn't we shouldn't even be using anymore? No, don't delete the forms. Um, if it's a family advocate form, let Meredith know and Meredith will take care of it. Only the director level has to leap. Um, 
authorizations, but basically in the footer, it should tell you, but sometimes people forget to update the footer, I sometimes do, um, with the most, uh, to say, hey, I revised it today's date. So the best is always, if you're uncertain, is just check with, if it's a family advocate form with Meredith, if it's um, something the teachers are using, I will check with Dr. Melania just to make sure if you're uncertain if it's the latest form or not. Yeah, because like I would, I would want to know like, okay, so say I found the, um, the no income interview form for application. Well, I, I started to type in it, not realizing what I was doing. And then that, you know, the same one was, so how do I go back to find the other? I know there's a way you can go back to find the original and put it back to the way it was supposed to be. So the next person who opens that, the next uh, person who opens it, okay. is Basically, seeing that I've made corrections. Okay. So that is what they call version history. So if I go to uh, okay. Is it gonna open for me? So there it is. So auto save is on. I'm going to take the <coughs> auto save off, and I'm going to make all kinds of changes here. Go. Blah blah blah. So I'm going to do that. Let me try and open it in. In SharePoint, there's normally something over here. It's called ver there. It is version history. So it's over there at the top, and you go to version history. And if it had been modified a few times, you could just say, "Hey, take it back to the version that was done last night." Um, if someone has already saved, but I haven't saved these changes. But that is how you would go back, as you would click on that, and it's called version history, and that removes all of the things you might have saved that you didn't mean to have everybody um, see, like if it was a, a form where everyone is going to be working in, say like a um, review, of personnel review and you started typing in a person's name or something you realize oh wait everyone can see because i'm still working in sharepoint you haven't gone file save as you go to the version history which is over there and you will just it'll open this and you can choose which version you want to go back to and sharepoint for some reason my sharepoint doesn't want to open i think i have way too many things open on this computer So that I can't actually show it to you in SharePoint itself. Let me see if I can. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to let me see it there, but that is what you're looking for version history. Does that answer your question, Laurie? Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you. Okay, so there's one other thing to be aware of when you are working in SharePoint and OneDrive. It is sometimes you don't realize that you've become disconnected, that you're not syncing. So that happened to us last week. Um, 
those who were working when uh, Comcast went down on us and we all lost our connection and we hadn't saved things. What happened is the SharePoint one that everyone was working in did not update everything that you did. So the one on your local drive had updated. So if anyone else opened SharePoint afterwards when we were back up again, they did not see your changes that were made because we weren't syncing because we had no internet access. So you carried on working thinking, ah, there's no issue and all your changes are no longer there in SharePoint. They are still sitting on your local drive only. So the next time that you started up and you went into SharePoint, it would start syncing. So the big thing to do always before you start is look for this little blue cloud that shows that you're syncing OneDrive to SharePoint. So that sometimes that cloud is gone because if you had this open, So typically, if I, if I always leave this up on my computer, I don't ever bother to shut it down or anything. But if you ever sign out of this and you carry on working and you've opened a file that is in SharePoint, but you opened it up in File Explorer, it will open up because it's sitting on your local drive and you make all kinds of changes and you'd actually signed out of here, those changes are not becoming available in SharePoint. So if ever you're working with other people in a document and you know they made changes and you can't see it and you say, what happened? Where did it go? I know you made these changes and you added all kinds of new data and I can't find it. That is the reason it didn't sync. So when you start syncing again, it's going to pop up with a message. Do you want to merge your changes to the server? And you want to go, yes. So don't get all excited if your changes aren't in the SharePoint thing. It just meant you weren't syncing. It's not lost. Just go back to your document through File Explorer, which is going to open up in your local drive. And when you then save and go out of there and you are syncing and say, hey, we'll merge your changes now. So I don't know how many people that happened to last week when we lost internet, but I know it happened to two documents I was working in and uh, poor Isabel, she also lost things, but we thought it was gone forever, but it wasn't. Once we were back up, when we saved it from our local, it was there. Anybody have any questions on that? So Janice, you're recommending that when you, um, like if you close down your computer for, for the night, you come back the next day and you open it up. You want to open up, um, you were obviously looking for your cloud to make sure that that is doing, but do you need yes. to, should you open up SharePoint as well? You don't do you have to. Do Okay. As long as you never signed out of it, it's running in the background. But if you sign out of SharePoint, whereas I just um, close it if I'm going to shut down for the weekend or something, I just always close my SharePoint by going to the cross. I never, ever sign out. So basically, it's still running in the background. Okay. Um, before we go away from SharePoint, was there any other questions on SharePoint or OneDrive? Nobody? We good? Okay, so I was also asked, can we go back through printer logic again? 
So remember that we no longer have a print server. Everything is in the cloud. All of our printers in the cloud. And to get to that, the app is called Printer Logic. Two different ways. I already have the little icon there. If you don't have the icon there, if you click on there, you normally find the icon in that group. But I have a separate icon. So I'm going to click that. And eventually, Printer Logic will open. And this is listing all the printers in the agency. Most of them, some are dedicated, so they're not in here. So when you look through here and say now you are in Northport and you want the Northport copier listed amongst your choices, all you've got to do is click on Northport copier. And it says, do you want to install this printer? You say, yes. If you want to have that as your default printer before you hit yes, just put the little check mark in there. And then it'll tell you it's busy loading. And whenever you want to go to print, that one will be available to you. Now, some of this is not accurate in location. But here it does show you where things are, where the printers are like. Oh, wait, admin, I'm going to change because it was confusing saying admin area. It's actually in the comprehensive services office. But basically, these tell you where you can find the different printers like, oh, wait, Jennifer is actually Bridget's printer. Any questions on printer logic? Uh, then I sent an email around yesterday with some documents we can play in. So if you can open up the one that says Word Example Tutorial. <coughs> and before you freak, this is a 2001 document, really old, been updated many, many years. Wendy will recognize it from the year she worked in it in the work plan. <coughs> Okay, if you have it open, I just want to show you one thing of how to make your file bigger or smaller so you can read it, is just to pull this little bar over here and you can keep it to whatever size you are comfortable working with. <coughs> okay, so if you are going to edit things, in Microsoft, there's always three different ways to do it. There is the way on the ribbon where you go to all the different menus and you choose it. There is right click and it opens up menus or there are keyboard shortcuts. So there's a lot of ways to do things faster. And so I'm just going to give you a few of those that you could do. So normally, if you want to select all that you have typed over here, instead of having to go and highlight like this, and then something happens and you slip, you just go Control and the A button together, A for all, and everything is highlighted there, and you can uh, play around with it. So in this case, some more keyboard ones, I want to make this double spacing. So while it's all highlighted, it is control and the number two, and everything is double spaced. I look at that and say, oh, that makes my document way too long. Let me take one and a half lines. While everything is still highlighted, it's control five. And there you have one and a half line spacing. Nice, quick, easy way to do it without first going highlighting, doing everything. 
Um, if you want to, <coughs> okay, I'm going to do it again. You don't like the 12 size font because it's not going to fit in the size page you want to. Two things, you can change your font instead of Arial, which is a large one. You can choose a smaller one, which is Calibri. And you say, oh, too small. Let me make that larger. So instead of playing around with the sizes, press your finger on the control button and then on the right square bracket. And there you go. My font is going bigger, 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 bigger until it's the size I want. Way too big for me. Then you control and the left square bracket will take you to smaller. It's especially helpful for people who have to do long reports or for Wendy with grants, we've got to try and fit things in a specified spacing. It's a nice, quick, easy way to do that when everything is highlighted and you can just play around. Oh, take that back to 12. So Janice, you um, said to increase, it's the control right bracket? Yeah, so it's the control and the right left um, square right. bracket. Okay. And then the left just takes it down again. And of course, you can do that at any, you don't have to have everything highlighted. If it's just one paragraph or one section, you just have that highlighted. Um, so you're working within a paragraph. You know that if you click, it goes in a word. If you double click, it highlights the whole word for you. So you can make it bold, underlined if you wanted to. And that would be control B and control U. But if you want to take the whole paragraph, you want the whole paragraph instead of going like that, the quicker way is just triple click. And there's your paragraph. And then you can um, do whatever you want to to it. You can justify it over there. As you see, there's always a tip in the toolbar too to tell you how to do it. So control J. Or if I wanted to uh, make it centered, would be control E and everything is centered. And so I'm going to go back to left. If you want to indent something quickly, so all these paragraphs here, you don't like what Word does for you, I'm just going to go there. You grab these buttons over here, and you can put that wherever you want those numbers. And the same with this. You move it all the way there, you move it all the way there. Now, say now, I did this. Um, bold this whole paragraph this um, paragraph three should also be bold. All you need to do is highlight paragraph three. You go control Y for yes, and it repeats your last command. So control Y will just repeat the last command. The other way you can do it is you know which paragraph you're going to do is you could highlight one, highlight three, and you can take the bold underline whatever you want. So either by keeping your finger on the control button when you highlight things, which is non-consecutive, or you can just use the repeat command, which is control Y. If I decide my paragraph two 
should actually be the very last paragraph or say where paragraph four is. I'm just going to highlight that one. And I'm going to go shift, alt, and the arrow. And it's going to move it up or down to wherever I want it to go. So instead of cutting and pasting, you just highlight it and it's a shift, alt, and arrow. Um, and then again, you all know about the format painter, so that if I wanted to make my heading look different, I decide I want to use that heading all the way through. Oh. While it's highlighted, I click on the format page button, and then I just click on there, and I don't have to keep repeating all of those things. Oh, you doing echo? Okay. And one other thing that people often want to know is they want to put some, they want a watermark on it, which means, you know, like the word draft or copy that goes at the back. To do a watermark, you would go to design, and they couldn't make it easier for you, watermark. And then you can choose how you want it to be. If you want it to be that type of um, orientation, or if you want to change the wording, but say now I want do not copy. There it is in the back of my document, do not copy. That is how you put in a watermark. Any questions on those shortcuts? Dennis, can you go back one to the one where you highlighted and underlined and then you did something with the paint, something? Okay, so it was this one here that I changed the font and I changed the underline. Then you go on your home ribbon you have a button that looks like a paintbrush. So you click on that. And then just wherever you're going, you just click or highlight. Okay, thanks. Sure. So the other way you can do all of those things too is the right click which is Lamaris's favorite. It gives you all these options of now I can change the font, I can change the paragraph, I can copy, I can cut this. So I can either go and cut this or I can go control X and it'll cut it as well. So cut and then right click where I want it and paste. And of course, there my autosave was back on again, shouldn't have been. So whenever you want to do anything and you like to work with the mouse, just remember any stage, just right click and you will get a whole lot of options of what you want to do. What's the shortcut for paste? Um, control V for very. And for copy, it is control C. And then you know that if you want italics, it is control I. And then of course, control B for bold and U for underline. Any other questions of shortcuts or anything in Word or did you want to go through? Does anybody want to know again how to add shortcuts to the main menu up top? Yeah. 
No? Okay. So the other document I sent would be tutorial office supplies in Excel. If you open that one. There's a question that says, how about creating a merge file from Word to Excel? A merge file from Word to Excel. Oh, can you explain that? Whoever wants to know about the merge file from Word to Excel? What you were trying to do? It's your resource. There, there is a, a list of information. Actually, it's vice versa. There's a list of data that I have already um, captured in Excel, and I want right. to drop it to a letter in Word. How do I do that? Ah, <laughs> my way was the old copy and paste way. <laughs> I'll show you that. Yeah, there, must, there maybe is another way, but the way I've always done it, because basically I often do that and put them into um, emails, but you can put it into uh, a Word document too instead of working in tables, and I would just copy it. So if you look at the top over here, that button, it takes your document, or you can just highlight what it is. So, say I only wanted that piece over there. Copy. Okay, what I did there, you could see, is I hit the paste button. There's only one thing you've always got to remember to leave space. I'm going to show you when this eventually comes in. <coughs> typing, leave a space, do all of your typing in Word, then leave a space where you want to insert the document so that that way you can still carry on editing in Word underneath. So here it put it like that. So what I'm gonna do you see this one is just a bit too large, but basically that's how I've always done it is copy and paste. Let me see if I can. You go like that, but this is going to be what happens because I didn't put that space underneath. I didn't allow space. See what happens. So this is why I did this. Okay, to, to move that down. I'm going to create a space afterwards, but if you do this, come on, go to now. Let me close some of these documents. Come on, the whole thing. I'm going to paste it there. I can still carry on typing below. So, whenever you do that, just remember to leave a space of where you can go and uh, put this. That makes sense, Stacy. It does, but it's probably not going to work for what I would need it for. 
uh, is this an internal document or something you're going to print and send to someone? It will be multiple documents uploaded to multiple people. Okay. What I have done in the past too is I've put a hyperlink in. So wherever it is, so where this source is, I put a hyperlink in and they click it if they're just going to be working within the document. And then it takes them directly to that, that file. So like... Come on, sorry. So laptop is very slow. Copy back to the document. Control V. I've done that before. Would that help you? Nah, not really. Uh -oh. I can try and find out if there's more ways to do it, but typically those were the ways that I've always done it in a in a document or if I've had to send something. Well, you know, it's it's more like if you're doing like a form letter, but you have that you're sending to multiple addresses and those addresses have been kept in Excel. So I just wanted to merge those. Oh, you want to merge. Yeah. If you want Oh, sorry, I thought you want to put inside the document. Oh, you want to do a mail merge. Oh, yeah. So mailings, and then you'll start, it'll be a mail merge that you'll be using. And then you'll refer it to your data source where you're keeping all the addresses and things. Got it. Okay. That is the way you do it. That, that would be a mail merge. Anybody else? I have a different question. Um, in you know, like in a Word document, um, when you've got the, uh, I have to look at the top to see what I'm talking about. Um, the markups. Can you talk a little bit about those? Frustrate me. The little the the difference among the different markups that that can happen in a document and what they mean. Markups. You mean these over here in review when several people have worked on a document? Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, I think so. If you again, I'm visual. Yeah, like it says, simple markup, track changes, show markup, review it. I mean, what are all of the, the differences among those? And what's like just the easiest way to do it to see my, what other people have done? These are my pet hates because guess what? <laughs> The personnel policies and the finance policies are like that, where all the different attorneys have put in their little pieces and all in different colors. And then when you go print it, it wants to print every single one of those as well. Yeah. Uh, so this one, there's no changes to track. Um, unless someone was actually doing it. Okay, let me show you this think uh oh,
I hope this one has it. Looks like you have a red X on your blue cloud. Yeah, I just lost um, SharePoint. The problem with the one folder. Come on. So Stacy says, create the link within your document. I'm not sure what that means. And Lori says, sometimes it does not show up as a blue hyperlink. Oh. Um, sometimes it doesn't show up as a blue hyperlink. You've got to press the enter afterwards. OK, of course this will happen. OneDrive, come on. And review. Of course, this one doesn't have anything in. Okay. Wendy, can I show you when I see you? Because it's good, I, I have to find a more recent document that's got all of that in. Sure. Then I can show you my petate. Okay. Anybody else have anything on Word? Well, let me ask you this then, like when, when you're sharing a document from SharePoint and people are going to be editing it, um, is it going to show the edits and who made the edits or is there a specific setting that has to be done that way too? You ask it to show. That's when you'll say, show me all the markups and then it'll show you who all made what changes, uh, what date and what time. Okay. Plus it also in the actual SharePoint, it also shows you who you, who used the file last. So you can see what they did. I'll go back to here. Um, it just shows me that I viewed that one. But if you go into actual this, it shows you who all has pulled out documents and what they have done too. So you can see all the ones I've been playing in a few hours ago. So but does position. it show you? It does it show you exactly what you did? Like if you deleted a sentence or you edited a sentence or added something, or just see. that you've been in there, but I won't necessarily know what it was. Let's see if it shows me what I did on this one. Okay, bad one, Stacey won't be happy for me. I'll show that one. Let's try another one. Um, okay, try this one. So in this way, you can go show changes if you're going in through the Chrome side. If you weren't, let's go into the desktop app.
things have changed. Okay, so I think the best way is to actually see it in here, show changes. In Word, it's, I know that you can go to that, but this one is slow. Come on. Okay. Okay, normally you go to there you go, show changes. And there it tells you everything I did. Basically what I did was I changed all the formulas. That what you were looking for, Wendy? Yes, I just know there's different ways of looking at how changes are made, and I just didn't know if the difference among them. But that that's fine, at least. I mean, that's that's one thing. And then as I say in Word, I know you go to review and track, and you can see everything as well. And it shows you in different colors um, in Word of who edited what. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let me see that one. Oh, there you see what happened there because I got disconnected from OneDrive and I made changes here. It asked me if I want to merge my changes. So that's what happened to us all on Friday when Comcast went down. It saved everything to our local drive. And then when we got reconnected, we didn't lose all those changes. It would offer to merge it for us when we were back online. Okay, so in Excel, as in Word, the very best thing to do first is type everything you want and you go and format later. So this is an example of how not to do things. So you see there's a total here and I've had to go and do it all manually because I didn't design this properly in the first place. So if I click here now, it's gonna show you that I had to go and click every single cell to go and um, get the total up top so when somebody does that. What I should have done was not put this merge in, so I put headings in which merged, and because those headings are in, I couldn't just do a simple little, hey, just do um, from L14 all the way down to that one, because I went and put in these Merge headings, it stopped me from doing that. So in my total columns, I had to go and click in every single one of those cells to make sure that if I changed, uh, let's see, four, four, it would put that, the total at the top for me. So whenever you're doing things, don't have empty rows that also confuses it and don't put in a merged row like that because then you can't really um, play around with your formulas and things too much. So after I did all of this, I realized, hey, I wanted it to add up, but I'd already designed the whole thing. I didn't follow my own practice of first type everything and then play around. I decided to try and make it pretty as I was working. Bad, bad idea. And again, with Excel, sometimes your file extends quite to the right and you can't read everything. Just remember, you can make things 
smaller and larger over here so that if you've got a very large file you can still read all the things to your right So I'm going to give you another one that I didn't send to you, just to give you an idea. What oh, I can show you on here. Come on. When you have a very large file like this one, it goes all the way down. Way, way, way down. And I'm in row 266, and I want to see something that was in row 5. All I've got to do is go Control and the Home button, and I'm back at the top. Similarly, if I'm at the top, and I want to see, oh, my very last row, I put something in, I want to change that. Control and End will take me to the bottom of my document. So that's only... That works really well in Excel when you've got massive documents. Control Home takes you to the top, the top, and Control End takes you to the bottom. And now you see on this one over here, which is all the keys for the entire agency. For me to try and find where to find the kitchen at. Um, Marib will take me forever to try and find it. So that is where you really use the filter key. So again, there was the filter key in data, filter. Now I can say, hey, show me Marib, which in this case is called orange. Okay, now my list is much less to scroll through. And I can make it down some more and say, hey, it's only the kitchen I'm interested in. And voila, there's my answer. So big documents, those filter keys are really, really, really helpful. Um, I'm going back to this one. Uh, to put in formulas. You guys were asking about that. So this one over here, you can see what I typed in. She started from scratch. So to start a formula is always the equals key. And this is where I'm going to type in. So I want that. And then I want to put in which amount I'm going to use. And in this case, I'm always going to choose the cheapest one. So I'm going to multiply it by 2.75, which was my top there. And there's your answer. On this one, it was automatically doing. So if I choose two of that, it automatically puts it there. So that is my formula. It was the equals. I clicked on there. The little star is the multiply. And I chose that column there. And then, of course, over here I'd already said total everything. So the moment I type anything in there, the total is now popping up. It did not pop up if you're wondering why I didn't do it for you yesterday or the day before or anything when you're working in this form. I just did it all last night. So as of now, it will be a lot easier for those who type out purchase orders. And please let me thank everybody that has been hiding their rows and making it so much easier for us when we get your orders. And when we print them, we're not having to print four pages. We are printing one. So we are sending up a lot less paper to AP, which means that we save on our FedEx charges as well. So thank you very much. For those who are doing that. Um, so then when you have lots and lots of data, in this case it wouldn't be so much, but if you had a folder like I did on the keys and you don't know where to, to start, 
you can go to forms. So remember last week I actually put the shortcut forms up here. So there it is. So if I've got a new key now, all I've got to go do instead of scrolling to the very end or wherever it I want to do and what I want to say is I just click new and I go orange. Orange, my key ID, which should be W14. It's door closet 15. Okay, and then it takes the next one. So it puts everything where I want it at the end. And if I want to do edit something too, we see at the top over there it tells me which row I'm in. And I happen to know it was this one. I say, oh, that wasn't a door. So it wasn't an office. It was a closet. I can do that. New. So you can work in forms when you have a very, very large spreadsheet. Um, another thing when you're working in spreadsheets and you've got to keep things in. Let's find one over here. You've got to keep it in one cell. Some people go and they type it into two cells and they merge it. And the moment you do that, of course, you know that it throws off all of your formulas and how things work. Try and keep everything in one cell. You can do that by I'm going to use the right click, format cells. And you're going to take alignment and you're going to do the wrap text. And then as much as I type in here, it's all staying in that one cell. And you'll just drag it like that. And that way it's not going to affect my formulas. And there's sometimes when you want it to show in two particular rows but you want to keep it in the same cell in the same row like in this case I want Northport to be below the laminating rolls it is alt and enter and it takes it to there so I'm not creating another blank row just to fit in that word I'm keeping it all still in the same row in the same cell all I'm doing is going alt enter and it will put it into another row. If you're putting <coughs> a lot of, um, let's see, you can put in as many as you like. Um, okay. If you want your little, like, Bullets, that's the closest you're going to get to bullets in there. So don't create rows where you don't really need rows, where you can keep everything together. You use the wrap text function or the alt enter. And that way it doesn't interfere with functionality if I'm trying to find something or to change a formula. And then headings, because you merge them often, like this, you see this heading is merged across. So if I was trying to do things, let's see, sometimes it will let you insert and you're okay if you're inserting a column. Uh, depends on what other ones you have. Sometimes it won't let you insert another column once you've merged your headings. So always merge your headings is the very last thing that you do. 
Any questions? Any? If we don't have any questions, then that is what I have today to find the ways to do things a little quicker and easier. Okay, thank you everybody and uh, hope you enjoy playing around with shortcuts. And if you have any questions, just remember, I'm not the only one you can ask. You can always call up Lamaris and Isabel and they will be more than happy to help you as well. So enjoy the rest of this week and the, your trainings and best of luck for Tuesday. I hope it is going to be one of the better years yet, despite what everyone is going through the pandemic. Thank you all for participating. See you next time. Thanks, Janice. Sure.